Hello everyone and welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a gaming twist. I am Clifton and welcome to a Saturday night gaming stream. I'm just not realizing my shirt is glowing. <laughs> I just closed a window right before I started the stream and it, I guess it messed with my lighting. So let me let me see if I can fix that while I give some shout outs to the amazing people who are here already. Saw you guys were pre-gaming a good bit earlier. Um, welcome to Donnie the Linux Cat. Good to see you, an amazing mod here. I see some Bourbon Bite Club members. I see Sugar Kitty. What's up, Sugar Kitty? Whiskey Mountains, another amazing channel here on YouTube. You guys go subscribe to her. Um, I also see Zopher, a patron of the show, Mike Meyer, a good friend of the show, and lots of other awesome people here in the chat tonight. So good to see so many people show up. I guess you guys have been wanting me to play this game for so long. Um, this is technically part three of this game. So actually, I, um, oop, that does not look, you know what? I'm a freaking professional here. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just going to roll with it. I'm just going to, my green screen is not great tonight, but my, my window was like really messing it up earlier, but eh. Good enough. When I play the game, it's going to look a little little worse, but we're going to roll with it. So, <laughs> um, Also see some new faces in the chat. Good to see so many people showing up for Colonel I Love You, Colonel Sanders. Y'all know when I play this game, I, I got to get some KFC. So I got me some freaking, got me some KFC biscuits, which are weirdly see-through as well. I don't even understand. There's, there is no green on this biscuit. Um, I got some popcorn chicken. So we are going all out um, with the Colonel tonight. We are full on loving us some Colonel Sanders. If you missed part one, there's a video of that on my channel. Um, part two was on Twitch actually. So check out twitch.tv slash bourbon bites for part two. This is part three. I don't remember exactly where we left off with this game, but I figured it'd be a fun night to play it. I also, y'all saw the thumbnail, we're also drinking unicorn farts, because why not? So we actually have three different beers. I actually picked up two additional beers tonight um, to try. Now, I'm not the biggest, like, sour beer fan, but we're going to go for it tonight and see see how these, how, how I feel about these. So, of course, we got none other than Sour Me Unicorn Farts, which is, you know, the, a lot of people are talking about this beer. It has edible glitter in it as well. Um, we also have, if, if I don't particularly love that one, I got two more to try. This one is called Neon Rainbows, which again, green screen does not work very well with rainbows, as we learned <laughs> on a previous stream. This is an IPA. I don't love IPAs. This is from o Omega Gang? Omega Gang series? Wait, what's the what's the brewery on this one? It just says OMG series. Uh oh yeah. O Omega Gang. Om Gang is the name behind this one. Um, we also have Clown Shoes, which is another this is a hazy IPA. Um, this is from, man, it's called Rainbows Are Real. Oh, wait, no, you know what, Clown Shoes may be the brewery, because this release is called Rainbows Are Real. So, we have three different beers. I'm not the biggest, um, beer fan, but we're gonna see how it goes. Someone said, well, I pour it into a glass so you can see the glitter. glitter. Oh, absolutely. And if it doesn't show up because of my green screen, we may just disable the green screen and just roll with, <laughs> roll with my living room slash kitchen behind us, so. Um, but good to see so many people here tonight. Um, like I said, Colonel Sanders Part 3. Um, let's go and get something in our glasses, though, shall we? So I'm actually, I got the new KFC, I don't know if it's new, it's, probably, it's not new. <laughs> the KFC Mountain Dew, their, um, what's it called? Uh, Sweet Lightning. So it is a sweet peach and smooth honey flavored Mountain Dew. So we're going to give a little bit of a, we're going to do a little bit of fast food review here too. Why not, right? It's Saturday. Y'all know these Saturday streams are free for alls. Um, hopefully y'all enjoy it. We're, whatever. I don't remember, I don't know how much is left of Colonel Sanders. Um, we may beat it in like 10 minutes. If so, I have a backup game plan, but we're going to see how it goes. Um, Sugar Kitty says Omegang. Oh, oh Omegang, oh I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, they are from Cooperstown, New York. It's from the area he grew up in. Oh, very cool, Sugar Kitty. Well, I'm excited to give it a try. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the biggest IPA fan, but I figured for the stream, if we're drinking unicorn farts, I'm going to get all the rainbows. Because as we mentioned recently, it is Pride Month. This is the very end of Pride Month, so I'm getting all my gayness out. Not really, but <laughs> I wanted to finish off strong with rainbows and unicorns and my love for the Colonel himself. So. so that's the plan tonight. Let me go ahead and get a beer poured before I load up the game. Let's go ahead. And, you know what? Uh, we'll save the unicorn farts. How about that? Let's let's build anticipation for it. First, we're gonna do. What do you guys think? Should we do the clown shoes? Rainbows are real, or should we do neon rainbows? Why? Well, I, I figured. Well, I'll just I'll just do the one that Sugar Kitty just mentioned. He mentioned the Omega Gang. So we're gonna do neon rainbows first. Um, so we're gonna pour. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna drink all of these <laughs> this stream. I fortunately, my husband is a beer lover, especially an IPA lover. So he's gonna enjoy these probably more than I will. But you know what? We're just gonna pour a little bit just to. Sample and review here. 
give my thoughts on neon rainbows. Uh, I have been drinking beer, a lot of beer today. We we went to the beach. We went to uh, Manhattan Beach for the first time since moving to LA. We've been to um, we kind of are over Santa Monica, so like we're like trying to find other beaches that are like less crowded and like more picturesque. Manhattan Beach was awesome. We need to check out Redondo Beach, which is right by it. We like Malibu. Malibu is a lot nicer than Santa Santa Monica, so. I it just I'm in sweaty. I, I can tell I'm sunburned a bit, but it's all good. It's all, even though I've been drinking beers all day, I'm excited to drink some more tonight. So this is the Neon Rainbows from Oma Gang from New York. Um, see some people popping in. I see Bubble Bath Bourbon. What's up? Another amazing channel here on YouTube. Go give him a subscribe. Um, more Bike Club members showing up. Ty Bay, Ty Bay, good to see you. I think that's Tyler. Um, Emily Chambers, another incredible mod, uh, keeping holding down the fort here tonight. Whiskey Nose, another channel here on YouTube. Um, SG Flying High, what's up, Sherry G? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys saw part one of Colonel Sanders, but it, it gets a little crazy. So this is this is a little bit of the neon rainbows. Now these were in the cooler on the way home, so they should be pretty should be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Cheers, guys. Oh wow, it's light. I think um, my biggest thing, I, I don't love like super hoppy beers. So that's why I kind of steer clear from IPAs. This one though, huh, that's really subtle. Um, they don't really say, the back of it has, it says Citra, Continual, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Topaz. That's what the different colors represent. I don't know what that actually means. Maybe you beer lovers know that those are maybe different types of types of hops. I, I don't know. The, the back says Enchanting, Vibrant, ev evanescent Evan it literally says evanescent like the band weird i guess that's a word hmm, who knew this full spectrum beer is our unicorn alluringly hazy and irresistibly juicy unfiltered double dry hopped and gone too soon well neon rainbows that, that gets a recommend for me as a non-ipa lover it's really it's, it's not like super hoppy i know a lot of people love the hops but um Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to the unicorn farts later. I wanted to start with a d different one, build up the anticipation a bit. <laughs> oh, Donnie says those are the hops. Yeah, no, this is actually nice. It's refreshing too. I can see sit. This would have been a good one to have on the beach. Yeah, it's like it's fruity. It's um, it says double dry hopped. It's not dry at all. I don't know. Again, I'm not not a beer expert, but we're just <laughs> just trying it here tonight. I know the band's Evanescence, but I've never heard the word Evanescent. I guess the, the name had to originate from somewhere, but... <laughs> well, let me let me get some nuggies in hand, and let's get this game rolling, shall we? Again, thank you all so much for showing up this Saturday. I got the KFC sauce, which actually, I don't think I've ever had KFC sauce. I normally get honey mustard, but we'll see how it is. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers you with nuggies. That's, that's how we do it here on Bourbon Bites. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's, I thought it was going to be more similar to Chick-fil-A sauce, but this is pretty different. All right. Let's see if the game loads up properly here. And the backup game is almost finished downloading, so so let me actually pause. It's trying, it's friggin' Cyberpunk is trying to update. <laughs> hopefully, that, hopefully that doesn't affect the signal too much, but I just canceled it. Okay. Let's go to Colonel Sanders um, and see. Maybe we can beat it tonight. Maybe we can make him fall in love with us. I was making some bad decisions last time. I was like saying things that I thought were right, but like, weren't. <laughs> so let's, let's go in. We gotta, we gotta show the intro because y'all love this intro. Um, I realize my green screen is gonna look really bad because it starts out really white. So I apologize, but you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done some gaming streams. So, so I apologize for the lack of professionalism, but let's, let's show you guys, let's show you guys this. All right. Let me know if it's too loud. I'll, um, oh, looking for games. Come on now. It's right there. <laughs> ah, there we go. All right. Wow, my green screen. Look I told you it was going to look real bad because I changed the settings. All right. This intro, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The lovely, lovely Colonel Sanders. Now I'm see through. I was I was trying to quickly like <laughs> adjust my green screen, but then it just made me see through. You know what? I'm a little rock with it. I apologize for not being the most. Eh, nah, 
I'm a little see-through, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll roll with it. <laughs> I, I get hung up on things like that, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's so annoying. All right. So, here we go. That is right, Nick Proben. How, how you doing, Nick? Hopefully, <laughs> you're in for something tonight. I don't know if you saw the previous game version, previous time I played this, but let's see where we left off here. Here we go. Oh my god, let's see the biscuit. I haven't had a Chick-fil-A, or a KFC, I keep saying Chick-fil-A. I haven't had a KFC biscuit. Look at, oh my god, I got mashed potatoes. Look at how much gravy they put on these mashed potatoes. Like, it's literally mostly gravy, which I'm very excited for because I'm going to dip my biscuit all in that. All right. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside you, a storm rages. Well, inside me is about to be this biscuit. Friggin' KFC biscuits. That's actually it's a pretty good biscuit. It's like not as dry. Honestly, I freaking hate. I'm sure everyone does. I hate Popeyes biscuits. KFC. That's pretty legit. All right, so I realize I'm like block. I'm gonna move myself. Where should I? Nah, that's not. And then this corner might be a little better, so you can read more of the message. Nah. Ah, I should. You realize I literally just got home from the beach, like literally. 20 minutes before the stream started, so got my KFC. Didn't plan too well, but we're gonna roll with it. All right. All right, the storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that Ashley, oh my god, remember Ashley? Ashley, he and Ashley are in love, have decided to get married. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. He won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. Damn. Coming in strong with the insults. Let me turn the music down. I feel like it's a little loud. See if that's a little better. All right, if you guys could, if you want me to turn it down further, let me know. I got it turned down a little bit, but I can turn it down further. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from that devastating loss. Oh, that's right. It was a cooking competition, remember? And like, I just made all the wrong decisions. And like, this is where I quit. I like rage quit the game. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's see if I can recover. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not to fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. What's up, Mr. Whiskey Shits? Great hanging with you guys last night over on Livewire Whiskey. Go check out their channel and Mr. Whiskey Shits. Um, yeah, check them out too. <laughs> Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome. Mm, hell yeah. Successful and motivated. Okay. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obst obstetrician. That is a big word. Luckily, Clifton is here, not Cliffy. So Cliffy, Cliffy can't even read that. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. Really? Is that true? Was Colonel Sanders a lawyer? If if so, that's really awesome. I, or Well, he obviously failed at it, but I didn't realize he tried to be a lawyer. I'm going to eat more of this biscuit. That's damn good. I wasn't expecting the... Okay, I wasn't expecting the Colonel's biscuit to be so good. Oh, God. That's going to be... Don't don't quote... Don't clip that and use that in a future stream. It's payback. That's pretty good. The gravy... The um, mashed potatoes and gravy are needed, though, because... It's not as dry as Popeyes, but it's still pretty dry. The chicken, though, can't go wrong with KFC chicken. I mean, they call it, so. By the way, they're not called popcorn chicken anymore. They're called popcorn nuggets. They've changed. They've rebranded a bit, but they're still popcorn chicken to me. I miss when they used to come in like a popcorn, like a big old bucket of it. Did y'all used to get that when y'all were younger? We used to get that like for dinner with my family. My brother, that's all he would eat is popcorn chicken. <laughs> I'm reading Adriana's comment. She said he wasn't—he wasn't always a weirdly highly optimized version of Colonel S Sanders. He once looked like the real one. That's true. Ooh, James Taylor hit me with the info there. Sanders studied law by correspondence and practiced in justice of peace courts in Arkansas until a courtroom brawl with a client derailed his legal career. <gasps> oh my God! I'm just imagining. Colonel Sanders, this Colonel Sanders, imagine him just like tackling 
a guy in the courtroom. But also, what would be even funnier is the real Colonel Sanders, the not so sleek and sexy one, just like this massive dude, just like, ooh, coming down on someone because he's like threatening to share his secret recipe or something. <laughs> Donnie says, must mean there's not enough chicken in them to be called chicken. Well, let me show you. Let's let's do a little. We're doing a, we're a food review channel. Hey, it's not called Bourbon Bites for nothing. Should not Bourbon Bites, B I T E S. But there's another channel it's called Beauty Bourbon and Bites. Um, she does food food things, but she does cocktails too. Awesome. She's on Instagram actually, so go go check her out. There's chicken in there. Can't really see it, but there's chicken in there. Pretty good. <laughs> Zobra says 80% batter, 20% chicken. Nah, eh, eh, little, pretty close to that though. Not gonna lie. <laughs> all right. Now that we're learning all these interesting facts about the Colonel, let's let's see if we can get in his pants. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. I, I didn't. I've never dealt with mules. Turn it down. Sorry, I'm stressed that the volume's too, the music's too loud. So, <laughs> people see my del delicate ribbon tie and my well kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. <gasps> what do y'all think? Okay, if it, if it gives me a choice, usually there's a countdown. If it gives me a choice to hug him, should I hug him? Should I hug the colonel? Urgent alert! I need help with the chat. <laughs> should I hug the colonel if I have an option to? I made a lot of, like, I was too uh, bold, I think, last time with my approaches, which scares me to, that scares me to hug him, but it might be my chance to redeem myself, get closer to the man. Ah, that's, I'll, I'll wait till you guys respond. Let me, let me go ahead and finish this beer and we're going to move on to our second beer, um, which is the Clown Shoes Rainbows Are Real. But no, I'm, I'm actually, this Neon Rainbows from, I, I'm probably mispronouncing the title, the name of the brewery, Oma Gang. Um, it's actually really good. Now, this was like about $4.50 for the can. So, but again, craft beers are usually pricey, but. Fred says, always hug. Um, Zofer said, didn't I spend the night with him last time? So what happened was, um, I apparently got really, I don't think I got drunk. Something happened to me. I took some like mushrooms or something. No, I don't know what, there was like freaking chicken nuggets spinning around my head or something, but. He carried me back to my room and put me to bed. Um, and he tucked me into bed. We did not, he did not, for clarification, I did not sleep with the colonel yet. All right, y'all are saying hug him. Donnie says ask first. We'll see, we'll see. Let's see what happens. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Chandler changes focus, you can see something ignite inside him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. So this is the Colonel before KFC. Interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, do y'all remember this kid? This poppy kid? You could like pursue him and like date him. I'm like, this is really weird, KFC. But you know what? Maybe I'll do a, a second playthrough and see what, see where that goes. That was that was weird. I was like, okay. <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Uh oh. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. <gasps> it's the spork monster. Oh no. Okay, let's let's see what let's see what happens. Borko? It is I. I know that I said I wouldn't be back. Oh, we let him go. Remember we like had a fight with him? And I let him go. I spared him. I should have killed him. Oh, no. After the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just want to say that I was wrong to attack you and apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? True, true. Oh, thanks, Borco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you know. Oh my god, should I just start pursuing the spork monster? Because I feel like we're, we're hitting it off really well right now. I feel like he's either tricking me, or he's trying to, he's trying to get with me. Because I, I could, you know what? Spork monster, let me, let me just... 
Let me just tease you with what I want to do to you, Mr. Sport Monster. Stick around. <laughs> Alright, that was weird. I, I, just, I just seduced a spork. Never in my life would I thought I would do that. Alright, let's move on. I don't believe it. You're a human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever. <laughs> I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. <gasps> Wait! Wait, the golden retriever, he's a student. We've seen, we know the teacher. The teacher is a golden retriever, right? Those of you that have not watched the previous streams are probably so fucking confused about what the hell I'm talking about right now. I feel like the teacher was a golden retriever or it was like one of those like Shiba dogs. <laughs> I don't know. It's a very trippy game, Donner Fast Whiskey. It's, it's you, you gotta be either high or just like freaking high on chicken nuggies because this game calls for it. They're, they're delicious though. I want to spoon with the spork monster. Please don't hook up with Sporky. Okay. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent with tho from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. I don't know. Oh, the dog teacher is a corgi. That's right. Sugar Kitty, it's been, it's been a minute since I've played this. Thank you for the reminder. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Cliffy, together, I am sure we can defeat them. <gasps> he said together. Oh my god. Maybe I can get with him to, to, today for real. <laughs> Clifton's playing the field or playing the friggin' buffet. <laughs> um, by the way, I, did, I forgot to mention this. Um, after this stream, we are doing our monthly Patreon hangout. So everyone $5 and up on Patreon, we're going to hang out. We might play some games, maybe some Among Us. Um, people have been teasing doing like a jackpot, Jackbox party game. I don't know for sure if I can play that without you guys having the game. If so, I may buy it like during the hangout and we can play it. But if not, I might need to research that a little bit more. But yeah, so everyone, everyone $5 and up on Patreon. I hope you guys can hang with us after this stream. Um, this is usually pretty fun, those Saturday night monthly streams. I mean, I, those hangouts are like, get a little crazy sometimes, but hope to see you guys there. And if you're not yet on Patreon, you can join at the link below. Um, for as little as $2 a month, you can support the channel. Um, or you can become a Bike Club member and get access to some amazing emojis like Sugar Kitty has. Sugar Kitty, if you want to show off some of those emojis, I know the Colonel is one of those emojis. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, but yeah, everyone $5 and up on Patreon tonight. If you want to, if you want to join the Hangout, please join us. It's a lot of fun. Um, and if you happen to join Patreon tonight and your Discord status, we do, the, we do our Hangouts on Discord. Um, it's at bourbonbites.com. That's like on the Discord. Um, if you're not, if your status doesn't automatically come over with Patreon, just send me a message and I'll, and I'll like upgrade your tier so you can um, join us in the Hangout. So, <laughs> all right. So what, what time is it? I, I realize my clock is blocked. I, I got clock blocked by some Alberta Premium. I was chugging a little of this last night on Livewire Whiskey. That, got, that stream got a little crazy. I, I was on Trev Wilson's stream um, earlier in the night, and then I came back on Trev like four out four and a half hours later because he was still live. And then he wrapped up, and then Livewire Whiskey was on. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm freaking, I'm gonna go all over the place. Why not? I felt it this morning. It, it was tough, but it was a lot of fun. Oh, Jim Morris says you don't need a copy of Jackbox Party Pack to join a game, just a phone or computer. Awesome. It depends how many people are there. If there's a lot of people there, I don't want to leave anyone out because I think it's only up to eight players. Oh, uh, Sugar Kitty with the emojis. Look at that, you guys. You can freaking send Colonel Sanders emojis if you are a member of the Bike Club for $1.99 a month. You can join on the YouTube page. Just click join right below this video. Going to be adding more emojis soon. I just unlocked more. Um, once you have a certain amount of members, you can unlock more emojis. So we're going to we're gonna up, we're gonna up put some pretty, pretty fun emojis there soon. If you guys have any ideas for emojis you want to use on the chat, let me know. I'd be, I'd be happy to get those going. Okay, let's take a break from the game. We're gonna review our next beer. So let me, what's the best way to do this? Eh, we'll just mute that. And there we go. All right, so I realize now my shirt is still see-through. Ah, that's fine, we're all with it. All right, so we determined the Neon Rainbows was delicious. Let's try Rainbows Are Real by Clown Shoes. I apologize for that being like, maybe you can see a little better there. It's a really pretty label. I like it. There's like these two little um, gamer people. Ah, oh, man, my light is too bright for that. <laughs> There's like two little um, aliens or something. I don't know. It's a hazy Indian pale ale. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try that one. Julie, like, what's up, Julie? Good to see you. I, I really enjoyed watching the fight that you and Dan sent um, Matt for Matt Madness last night. That was so much fun. Shelf Turds. I mean, were Shelf Turds not the most amazing host you've ever seen? Other than Matt, of course. 
Shelter's freaking killed it last night. I had so much fun. If y'all missed Matt Madness, he competed against himself last night um, from a from a flight that the like sent him. Oh my god, so much fun. You guys gotta watch that. And then the songs. Oh my god, those songs are still stuck in my head. All right, we're gonna drink the clown shoes now. Um, Zopher says he loves hazy beers. Actually, Justin, my husband, he really loves um, hazy IPAs. Those are his favorites. So definitely gotta save some of this for him after after I give a little review. Pour a little bit more. All right, so let's 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 cleanse my palate with a little bit more biscuit of the Colonel's biscuit. All right, <laughs> that little walks in right as I say. Let me just eat the Colonel's biscuit. All right, so before we continue the game, I'm going to try this clown shoes. Rainbows are real. Hazy IPA. Oh well, it's very hoppy. Y'all heard me earlier, like, hops aren't my favorite thing. Color-wise, I'm going to have to turn this green screen off whenever I'm doing the um, unicorn farts, because there's glitter in it. I want you guys to see it, so we may disable, ruin the magic, pull back the curtain. <laughs> you know what's funny? I could literally just be like, I can do like this. Whoa! Living room! <laughs> Alright, let's try the clown shoes. Cheers, guys. Okay. Also very light. What's the ABV? So the ABV on the first one, I forgot to mention that. The first one was 6.7% ABV. This one drink, This one seems lighter. Let me see. Oh, 6.75. Actually very close. Okay. Let me, let me go for a second taste. I think I need a second taste of that one. Second taste, it improves. It's, very, it's a lot hoppier than the Neon Rainbows. But, again... If you're a hazy IPA lover, you're you're gonna love this one. Also around four dollars. I um, let's see if I have the receipt. I may have threw it. Yeah, I might have threw the. It's actually still in the bag. It's fine. Um, these are all around like four dollars each. The the unicorn farts. I got a four pack for fifteen. So, like what, seven? Wait, no, four pack for fifteen. Man, quick math does not work in my head. So about the same price, basically four. Yeah. Um, so, clown shoes. I think it's pretty good. Rainbows are real. I don't know. No, let me see what they say on the back of it. From mythic hammer wielding beast to intergalactic agriculturist. By the way, this sounds this sounds like it came from Guar. If y'all missed my video, I did a review of the Rad Ragnarok Rye from Katatna Crete, which was a collaboration with the hard rock band Guar. Check out that video if you missed it um, after this stream. It was a lot of fun. It's, it's it's a very very interesting rye whiskey, but it's also a really interesting band. So they call themselves an intergalactic um, rock band or whatever. So seeing the word intergalactic reminded me of that. Here at Clown Shoes, we think about some crazy stuff, but even we can barely comprehend the natural wonder of a big, beautiful rainbow. We will forever remain in awe of those massive swaths of vibrant color that stretch forever into the horizon. This hazy IPA contains the terp terpenes, terpen, terpenes, terpenes, that's a beer word, I don't know. You know what, I don't claim to be a beer expert. Beta pinene and linalool, aromatic compounds derived from natural botanical sources. They supplement the sweet malt backbone and lively blend of azaka, citra, and mosaic hops. Ah, we saw those. We saw some of those words on the other one. So they tell you what actually hops they use. Interesting. That's something I don't really know about beers. They like disclose the hops, and I wonder how maybe certain of the certain hops I gravitate more towards because the ones that aren't that hoppy are my favorites. So that's good to know. Um, they make rainbows. So it, it's a blend of these these hops that make rainbows are real shine with fresh, juicy notes of sweet citrus. So this is, again, this is the clown shoes, rainbows are real. Um, let's go ahead and try it. I almost drank out of the can, like I just poured it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wanted to revisit it to see if it changed, but it's pretty light, honestly. I would say it's a little disappointing. It They really build up a hype. Like you expect a rainbow beer to taste very like like bam, like in your face, like <laughs> fruity, you know, tropical. This is pretty, pretty just basic, but you know, it's not a bad one. It's got a really cool bottle design. Um, I think I prefer the neon rainbows though. Let me let me try the neon rainbows. We're of course we're saving the unicorn farts for the end. So, oh yeah, neon rainbows hands down is my favorite so far. All right. Let's let's get let's get a little more nuggets. I really this by the way this is my dinner. <laughs> like I'm not just eating these for show, so I need to actually eat some because I've been I've been drinking beers on the beach all day. 
All right, let's get back to the game. All right. Cheers, Tim Evans. Good to see you. And sorry if I missed someone else come in. I was going on a tangent for some reason. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's see what's next. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Oh. Wait, did he just wink it? I swear I just saw him wink. Maybe not. Maybe not. I thought maybe it's just my imagination. It's what I want to happen. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Sir Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Oh, oh, oh. oh wait, we, you know what? We may have gone back, because we did some of this one. I've been here before. I think part two, it backtracked me a little bit, because this is what this is how we ended part part two. It's okay. It was on Twitch. There were not that many people there, so we're backtracking a little bit. But Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, and never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perked up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? All right, you got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? What do you guys think? Should I reveal my secret to the Colonel? I feel like I don't remember which decision I made last time. Like I said, it's been a minute since I played this. Tell me if I should reveal this to him. <laughs> I think I revealed to him, and I think I picked the wrong... I feel like mashed potatoes last time, I think, actually. Man. I could eat these freaking popcorn nuggets all day. Alright. Adriana says reveal. Alright. Two votes for reveal. Let's do it. Sharing my original cooking with the colonel. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. Oh, I didn't even get to choose. Coleslaw. The sh shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Lux hideaway. By the way, KFC coleslaw is legit. I like it. It's, it's got an interesting um, sweetness to it. I don't even normally like sweet col coleslaw, but KFC does it right. I prefer their mashed potatoes, though. Together you chew down... <laughs> Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire, it, admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, I remember snooping around. Like, there's some, like... We'll, we'll take a quick look again. We'll recap. It's, again, I think a lot of you guys may have missed the other stream because it was on Twitch. So we're going to recap a little bit. So let's click on his cock. <laughs> Very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it's just... Is it just realistic? It's real. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. The true state of bird, the true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Ah, so apparently the the chicken's not really the state bird of Kentucky. It should be, it totally should be. Uh, let's look at the view. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Well, shit. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Uh, no, actually, I was just hoping to like get in the Colonel's pants. Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I can just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you say I'm in the middle of something? Like, hooking up with the colonel? You open the window to a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with the breeze. <laughs> oh, he tried, he tried. Alright, so there's like a vault where his secret recipe is. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? That's like... That's like one of those things that makes you just think. Like, can it? Probably not. Not raw, most of all. But like, you could probably do something like that. <laughs> uh, I don't really... Eh. Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. This door just opened. Did you guys see that? There his signature white suit is. There, there his signature white suit is. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. 
You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they mean? Before you can look away any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that has been he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why he's wearing your jacket. <gasps> oh no, busted. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! I forgot to take it off. Okay, you decide now's your moment and make a big move. You tell him you're cold, and you fess up and tell him the truth. <gasps> I think I should tell him I'm cold. That's the, I think last time I tried to make a big move, and I, it backfired, and it got awkward. I think I should tell him I'm cold. What do y'all think? Let me let me eat some more nuggies and let me know what I should try. <laughs> By the way, what are you guys drinking along with me? I know you, I don't know if you guys are beer people. If so, let me know what you're drinking. But also, if you're drinking um, any good whiskeys, please let me know. We're about to do the unicorn farts here real soon. He's gonna steal my slaw recipe. <laughs> hey. As long as I get to taste his juicy, juicy chicken, I, I'm okay with that. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna tell him I'm cold. Okay, so, thoughts on the KFC Mountain Dew um, Sweet Lightning. I'm not the biggest peach fan, but actually this is actually pretty good. It's, it's, it's like a peach ring, but it like, it works. It kind of combined with the sweetness of like, they say the honey, I guess there's a little bit of that. But it's like a sweet peach ring. It's actually really good. It'd be really good with some vodka in it. <laughs> All right, I'm telling you I'm cold. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots close to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. I did not decide this. Who decided this for me? I want to sit there and cuddle with the colonel. But the thought of leaving the colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Cliffy? I honestly think this may be the be I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a s slumber. Wait, you talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. So I fall asleep at his house, it sounds like. I don't actually leave. Um, read in the chat what you guys are drinking. Bottle Baron is drinking Kirkland 1792 Small Batch. Let me know how that is, because I, I, I asked someone that recently, and I forgot to, like, check for their response. I, I've heard mixed things. I've heard some people really like it. I've heard some people think it's, like, eh, it's, like, meh. So I'm actually curious to hear what you think of it. Brian Toner is drinking a Russell's Reserve store pick. Um, <laughs> Emily says Mountain Dew Review. <laughs> Dream sequence, hells yeah. Let's do it. Like, see, this is freaking, this is like, I want this to be my freaking um, screensaver. You wake to a beautiful morning in the colonel's hideaway. So I think last time I said something screwed up and I got sent home. This time I'm hanging out at his house. Hashtag colonel cuddles, I know. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. Oh my god, that's literally what I'm eating. Let me let me take another bite of the Colonel's biscuit. It's like smell vision, but like I'm literally eating it. You taste the Colonel's food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we we're the perfect match? <sighs> hmm. I would say so. How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh, he does want me to taste his juicy, juicy cock. Chicken. Chicken cock. Such confidence, such grace. Could be the world's greatest gift to cookery. I thought, I thought it said take him down to peg. I was like, oh my god, we are going for it. All right. I think... I'm gonna flatter him. I'm gonna like not ruin this moment. You know, I think we might make a great team. <gasps> Did y'all see those hearts? A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eyes as he gazes out the window. <gasps> I didn't mean to make him cry. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. It's still trying to get me to run out the door, but oh well. 
There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I, because I had one heck of a night. Oh no, did she, did she hook up with the kid? Because like, I don't want to hear about if she did. I've been desperate to talk with you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something might have happened to you. It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get to be able to speed with the saga of Miriam. Wasn't she hooking up with the stove? Again, if you missed the last stream, you're like so fucking confused. I think she like met a stove that she was like hitting it off with. Steven Sussman said just got home. Happy to see the colonel is back. I am very, very happy to see the colonel. And eat some nuggies. Steven, where are your nuggies? I told you yesterday to prep your nuggies. Hope you got some here. Share with me. I think I can believe that. See? Since I've been partnered up with the Clank, he asked me to go out with him. The Clank is the freaking stove. She's literally dating, or it's like, not a stove, it's like a, um, like a, um, deep fryer or something. <laughs> of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together, getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? Pressure cooker, that's what he is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give her time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your all night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to the colonel's house where I spent the night with him. Damn, but I beat you a freaking pressure cooker story. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. She offers to support you no matter what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter the your rivals in the quad. Oh god, remember this guy? Freaking. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. I, I need another nuggie for this. Hopefully y'all are enjoying the ride. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, every twist and turn is so different. Oh, they're picking on the kid. That's not cool. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, oh no. Poor Pop. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Hee <laughs> hee, sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There, oh, I forgot I, I to do the Ashley voice. I'm sorry. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Cliffy, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words. I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are getting to boil over, getting close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the first day of school? Cliffy, how's that hand feeling? Cause he notched last night. You, you, no, that's kidding. I'm sure you'll be back in the fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail, winning so hard. Am I right? Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Exactly. We literally just freaking, freaking had a moment last night, and now he's like complimenting her. Man, I'm about to need some unicorn farts to get through this. We'll, we'll, we'll finish this cutscene and we'll do some unicorn farts. How about that? Mm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. It's a lot of words to say. It was bland. Excuse me, Cliffy. I am more than capable to speak for myself. You're right. I'll just, I'll just keep your biscuit in my mouth and keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Eric Black says this game has got to go. What's funny is this is official. I told Justin this. He didn't realize this was an official KFC game. They made this. They literally made this. So it's not some weird 
fetish thing. They made it to sell you on the Colonel. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk to class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. No, that bitch better back the fuck off of my Colonel. See you inside, Cliffy. No! Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out your spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that kind of magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. <gasps> Is there going to be a love spell in front of the colonel? You open a page called with war warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I can use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming exam. What? Don't you do this. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? <laughs> Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. Des desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Cast the forbidden spell or don't do it. What do y'all think? I don't think I should do it. Why would I cast a spell to forget the freaking... Forget the colonel. He's literally... The whole goal of my game is to get with them. But I want to hear what you guys think. Because this is a very important decision. I, I, I think no. But if you guys think I should cast the spell... I'll do it. I'm drinking the neon rainbows again. Uh, let me. I feel bad not the, the clown shoes. I love the I love the description on the back and I love the artwork. I just don't think I love the beer. <laughs> we got mixed opinions here. Donnie and Adriana says don't do it. Bubble Bath Bourbon says do it. Fred says no. All right, seems a bit overkill. I would agree with that, Jim Morris. So we're not gonna do it. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that's a good decision. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. Okay, before we get to this this um, lesson, I guess it's my final exam. So I think we're getting close to the end of the game. Let's go in and let's go ahead and try some unicorn parts, shall we? So let me go ahead and boop. There we go. So let's let's try some unicorn parts. Like I said, this is by Sour Me. Um, Green screens don't work with with logos that have a little bit of green in them. It's called Sour Me Unicorn Farts. It's by Duclaw, Duclaw Brewing Company in Baltimore, Maryland. This is 5.5% ABV. Um, ale brewed with fruity cereal and edible glitter. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to try this. Let's let's see how... Now, there's actual glitter in this, so we're going to um, pour it. In the, let me finish this real quick. Let me, let me, let me cleanse my palate with some... Sweet lightning. It's pretty damn good. I'm, I'm not like I said. Like I'm not a peach fan, but I like that. All right, let's let's try some unicorn farts. Ooh. All right, so I want to be able to pour this in a way that you guys can see it. So let me. Please don't spill it on myself. All right. Since we're gonna be showing up, we're gonna pour this whole thing because I want you guys to see the glitter. Oh, wow, that's not even going to fit in this glass. Eh. Um, instructions before pouring. Oh, no, was there instructions? It does say sparkles may settle, swirl, or gently invert before pouring. It's okay. It's okay because I, I, I shook it up. I shook it up a little bit as I was showing it off, so we're good. That <laughs> There's a lot of head on that, though. I think I may have poured it a little too aggressively. Let me... Let me swirl it before I add some more in. There's some room. Let me swirl it a bit. I'm sorry. I know. I should have read the pan. It's okay. It's fine. I have a backup one. If we if, if this doesn't work, I have a backup one. All right. Swirl the bottom edge. This is... We are swirling. There's plenty of room still in the thing, so... Ooh, oh, my God. I shook it too much. <laughs> oh, wait. I shouldn't be tasting. Oh, well. I swirled it too much. Let's see. Let's pour some more. This is a very, very foamy beer. Way more than the others. All right. 
It's a good pour. That has definitely been swirled, so. All right, that's in the glass now. It says, pony up for a taste of this glittery sour ale brewed with a trio of fruits, fruity cereal, <clears throat> fruity cereal and a swirl of edible glitter. Based on the flavor profile of the famous Unicorn Farts Donut, Made with free cereal, this beer is medium-bodied with big fruit notes, slight tartness, plus a hint of malty biscuit. Is it as good as the Colonel's Biscuit? Because I may be here for it. I imagine they probably mean like a, like a cookie. <laughs> a fantastical collaboration between Duke Law Brewing Company and Diablo Donuts. All right, let's, let's see. Let's see the color on this. I feel like I got gypped. Where the hell? I mean, the head may have been glittery. I didn't really see much. I'll pour a little more. There's plenty of. I'm a little disappointed. Like I saw the head on it. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot of head, but it definitely wasn't wasn't like glowing. It was just like, man, that's a, that's a little disappointment. So good. There's literally like I mean I would show you guys, but like literally. Oh wait, you know what? It looks it looks better on camera. So we're gonna pretend that it actually looks that 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 glittery, because <laughs> it doesn't. What the hell? Why does it not look like that? In... Oh wait. <gasps> Whoa. It does look like that. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, I got a little nervous there. So the way that the lighting is set up right now, I can't see it when I do this, but on the back side, if you have a light shining directly on it, that actually is glitter. Let me hold on. Let me to get the full experience. Let me sh let me show. Yeah, I know you guys can see it. Let me let me turn off my green screen real quick, so you guys can see that. Uh, there we go. All right, look at that. That's cool. That's really cool. You can't see it if you have like, if you put it right in front of the light, you can't see it. But if you do it off to the side, oh my gosh, that's so cool. All right, let's see how it tastes. I guess we'll go ahead and turn the green. <laughs> we'll turn the green screen back on. But that is cool. I like that. I was worried that I got gypped, but it just depends on the lighting. So if you guys, if you guys are like me and you feel like you can't see it, definitely definitely um look at it in different light and then it'll show up let me yeah, there we go all right let's go ahead and try sour me unicorn farts glittered sour ale i poured this whole thing so cheers guys oh it's so cool i love it oh now i'm not gonna lie i've only had one sour beer ever so that's different different okay hmm i man i just I, I guess i'm just so not used to like a sour beer i know i know it's like a whole like genre so this is really taking me off guard it's super lemon like that is like lemon you squeeze the lemon in it um someone said where i saw it a minute ago some of uh, bubble bath bourbon says it tastes like yellow fruity pebbles. Ah, you, it does have that cereal note. There's definitely like a cereal kind of grain note on it. That's interesting. It's not necessarily my my can of beer. The sourness is kind of like throwing me off because I'm so not used to that. Usually, like I said, I'm not a beer person. Normally, I would get like a like a red ale or like a even wheat beers. I'm I'm cool with. This is definitely a new experience for me. It's it's definitely tastes of quality. It's just not my flavor profile. So, um, Donnie says this is not it's not their favorite sour ale. Yeah, Donnie and Diana love good sour beers, so I trust their judgment. <laughs> Brian says chug. Yeah, this is so sour. Like I don't think I could chug this. It like it's so sour. I could actually. <laughs> not gonna lie, it goes down really easy. Someone said it looks viscous. It is. It's thick in the mouth. I mean, even compared to my favorite before, the Neon Rainbows. Yeah, that one's so light. So light. This is thick. Maybe it's just the gl glitter. Which, by the way, my husband told me, edible glitter doesn't actually mean you can digest it. It just means it, like, is not toxic. So, I'm going to have some... I'm going to have my own unicorn farts and poops after this. So, <laughs> so... Hmm. The more I drink it, once I'm past that sourness that I'm not used to, kind of dig it. Would I buy it again? I don't know. Sour beers. The weird thing is, it, it reminds me of 
even though I haven't had a sour beer, I've only had one sour beer. It reminds me of like, you know, like if you have a Corona and lime, which is like one of my favorite things to do, um, you put a little too much lime juice in it and it gets like really sour. This is almost what this tastes. It tastes like a Corona beer um, with <laughs> an extra heavy, heavy hand of lime juice. But we'll leave it in the glass. We'll, we'll drink it a little bit more as we go on <laughs> unicorn shits. <laughs> What's up, Ghostface Bourbon? Thanks for stopping in. We're about to get back to the game here. I'm going to sip on this. I'm going to give it some time to maybe open up if beer does that. It's making me very burpy, though. <laughs> glitter burps. It's funny if I just burp and like just glitter just like shot out. <laughs> Thick in the mouth. This unicorn, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of things that can be said about that. All right. I think this is my final exam, guys. So let's, let's see how it goes. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to give him a snack. You reach through your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My, my, Cliffy, were you studying somehow with something with cinnamon? I've been sitting on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Cliffy, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Oh no. Oh no. Wait, Donnie says wait. Why does Donnie say wait? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to keep going until I find out why Donnie says wait. <laughs> Sprinkles is interrupted by whirl, whirls, whirs, weirs, and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. <laughs> but no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joanne, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Oh, Donnie was talking about the choice. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, well, that doesn't make it, make it a great date. Beep. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Aww. That's my sad beep. <laughs> Clank begins to shudder. Oh, he's crying. Oh, no. Miriam, you don't have to be mean to him just because he didn't like the date. I mean, skydiving with the freaking pressure cooker is a bit extreme for a first date. I was reading Steven's comment about the joystick. I'm <laughs> like, that one's over. Steven, you got, you got a dirty mind, mate, dude. Beep, bzzit. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that clay. What? Eat what? I don't want, I don't want to know. Oh, look at his face. What the hell's happening to him? He's like melting. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker, considering that he himself has wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks... okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Oh, Clank. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well... That was unfortunate. <laughs> but we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown exam. Trademark. <laughs> I love the little trademark there. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. <clears throat> hey, Miriam. Are you okay? Uh Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Very specific, but okay. 
How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa was a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm not. I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. <laughs> Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> you're not gonna saddle up on. <laughs> you're not gonna saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion. Oh, his stallion. I was like, I was like, well, I mean, I want to, but like, they're talking about his horse, not, not him. Let me let me try his biscuit. Every time his name comes, I should just freaking eat his biscuit. It gets better every time. I see Eric's telling me to drink. I'm drinking, don't worry. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else wants to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to be making a very special soup. And I bet that professor dog is going to love it up. While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. <gasps> Bitch, I better be going back to the colonel's house. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. Okay. This, this requires more beer. Cheers to that, Adriana. Oof, that's so weird. I'm just not used to the sour note. Um, there's a bit, like, there's a nice, like, weediness, wheat, wheatiness that comes after the sour that I think is really good. I just think the sour is a little too much for me. I, I think the winner for me tonight was the Neon Rainbows. This, this one. This is actually really good. I enjoy this one. I'm going to pour a little more in that one. Because I need more beer. Why not? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going uh, to, I need to save some for Justin. Oh well. Pour some more of it. All right. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent, and a chance to beat the pants off of the Van Van, the supposed Man Man, and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Cliffy's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Cliffy. What are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. Um, Bullbath Bourbon says they actually mix fruity pebble cereal into the beer. Interesting. Okay, yeah, no, it, it did say that on the can. I would say I smell it a lot more than I taste it. I, I get the sourness, but I, I feel like that kind of. Oh, I wish this, I wish the sour beer was less sour. But what I'm saying is, I wish the sour would tone itself down a little bit to let those other like fruity notes shine, like the cereal notes. I think the sour is just so overwhelming to me. Again, I don't normally drink sour beer, so it could just be personal, like personal preference. I don't think it's it, it's not my favorite, but but it's it's an interesting one for sure. I mean, I think a lot of people would like it. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around mm. you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. <laughs> Says who? But that decision gets hard to stick. <laughs> gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound at all. Fess up about your practice dish. I think I should fess up. Let's just let's just fess up and tell them I was practicing. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was pot pie just from the smell? Not just pot pie, but chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? 
<laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping help, helping of TLC. But it will probably start burning any second if you don't put it out. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Oh my gosh, we're going into it. We are. We're, I guess I'm gonna make the pot pie for my friggin'. So I actually, I I bought their pot pie one time because it was part of like their five dollar lunch special thing. Their pot pie is legit. Have you guys tried KFC pot pie? Actually, I'm I'm a big fan of it. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you got. <laughs> Fred says, why did my brain autom automatically correct TLC to THC? You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. Now, if you guys remember last time, this competition, it's it's questions, but they're really quick. And they're actually like facts. They're like, KFC was founded blank. And they're like, I don't know them really quickly. And I know the chat's delayed so much, so I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not able to rely on you guys to help me out, even though I know you totally would. But... So we're gonna just, we're gonna see how I can speed through this. Let's do it. You decide the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Yeah, their pot pie is good. It's legit. Both Van Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over the top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big doing going small. Tweezers? What the hell is she making? Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, registered trademark, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders, Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects the ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, faster blaster, faster blaster. <laughs> I think it's, it's like the like moves, like they're like freaking dueling in Yu-Gi-Oh or like battling Pokemon. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point cooking chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clink learn to speak English? That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, wait, that's words. He thought just he's like speaking. Holy crap. Okay. <gasps> it's the singularity, as was foretold. What? <gasps> we mustn't let it happen, or the appliance <laughs> or the appliance uprising will take us all. Oh, they're talking about Clink. Self distr Van Van quickly unplugs Clink and rolls him out the back door of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. <gasps> is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? Bitch! You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? This sounds like a question for you guys. Last time, I ignored the spell book. I'm like, I'm not going to forget Colonel Sanders. I freaking love him. I want to freaking get his biscuit. Um, but this seems like... I'm a little more okay with using the spellbook here. What do you guys think? Should we use the spellbook? I think we should. Well, I'll let you guys know. I know that the delay, when I do these gaming things, the delay is like pretty bad. <laughs> so you guys are hearing that like 30 seconds after I say it. So I'll just eat some more nuggies and my dip it into the Colonel's secret sauce. And this is, I mean, friggin' beer and chicken. Like, this is this is a great Saturday night for me. Fred says magic for the win. Bubble Beth Bourbon says roll the dice. Go for it. All right. That's all. That's the encouragement I needed. Let's do it. Cast a spell. Let's do it. You take out your own spell book and let your instincts guide you to a page you've never seen before. It's a summoning spell that will conjure up the spork monster. Oh, my friend! Now seems like a good time to add some chaos to the mix. 
You have summoned me! Ah, the broom cooking arena. So many fond memories of battling in this place in my old life. In your old life? I wasn't always the monster you see before me. He already told me this. Once I was a student like yourself in tennis school. He literally already told me this, but okay. I'll give KFC credit. <laughs> he, was a, he was a freaking golden retriever. I see what's going on here. Things aren't going your way, huh? Been there, my friend. I tried to cast a spell on myself to imbue my body with the powers of my favorite foods. As you can imagine, things did not go as planned. When spells say only cast in case of emergency, they mean it. I'm kind of in a pinch here. Got any better ideas? The spork monster's smile curls up mischievously. For starters, never cast spells on yourself. Cast them on your rivals. Just tell me who's giving you trouble and we'll take very good care of them. You motion to Ashley, and before you can think better of this dastardly decision, he recites a spell that turns her into a chicken. Now a mere bird, she flaps her wings and glides off into the produce section of the arena, far from her station. Well, that was, hey, I was tired of that bitch anyway, so cheers to you, Spork Monster. That was a good move there. We gotta deal with that Van Van asshole, though. Okay, gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Uh-oh. This could be dangerous. You're immediately wracked with guilt over the act of blatant trans... Trans... I told you Cliffy struggles with big words. Transmogrification. Transmogrification. You don't know what to do. It would be poetic justice for Ashley to live out the rest of her days as a chicken, and yet that seems unspeakably cruel. After all, it is just a cooking competition. <laughs> Try to save her or Ashley remains a chicken. I will let you guys decide that one. Is Ashley going to remain a chicken or are we going to try to save her? I feel like... What's up, Joseph? <laughs> Man, Joseph, you came in at a really weird time. We just turned my rival into a chicken. And now Sender is going to eat her. <laughs> oh my god. That's what she would want, right? She wants the colonel to eat her. All right. I think I should turn it back to human, but I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> I'd rather just screw her. She has thick thighs. You must save her. Steven says leave a chicken. Save that witch. Oh no, it's tied. Two and two. Who will be the timebreaker? Two of you want me to save her? Okay. Three of you said leave chicken. We're going to leave her a chicken. <laughs> She's going to save a fucking chicken. Chicken Ashley pecks around at the base of some cabinetry. Searching for some loose vegetables to eat. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Cliffy, how could you? Cheating on the final exam? I've never been more disappointed. Oh no. And here I was considering you for a place not only in my future chain of highly successful chicken restaurants, but also my heart. <gasps> Y'all! No! Without hesitation, he casts a counter spell from memory that saves her. There's such a thing as competing with honor, and this does not qualify. I no longer want anything to do with you. Oh my god, I am so depressed. I am so sad. I am so sad. Oh, thank god. There's another- I can go back. I can go back. Okay. <laughs> thank god. Eric says, I need more drink. I need more drink, too. Thank god I can redeem myself. I know. I know. You guys told me. Okay, I'm totally going to turn her into a chicken again. Well, no. I don't know. Try- Okay. This is Steven. All right. So, okay, this time, should I should I cast the spell but turn it back to a human? Or should I just, like, not? Because technically it's still cheating. It's still cheating. But if I feel like if I don't cast the spell... Hey, but listen. If I don't cast the spell and she casts the spell on me, he's going to say the same thing to her, right? I think he's going to say the same thing to her. So I, I think I'm not going to cast the spell. I know there's, like, some delay here. So we're just going to not cast it. I'm going to do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. He winked at me, okay, he winked at me. Yeah, we're doing it the hard way, thank God, because I'm rock hard for freaking Colonel Sanders. I believe in you, Cliffy. This is how it should have gone. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Cliffy, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're over here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short time. I'm actually already done, so thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices 
directly into your boiling noodles. Wait, boiling noodles? Oh, mac and cheese. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Oh no. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many, and I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I say you're doing pretty all right. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Can you please fix my freaking macaroni and cheese? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the sport must notices that you've got the grim grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Chris crossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little sport pup back in the old country. Wait, so wait, the other guy said he wasn't always a spork. The other guy said he accidentally turned himself into a spork. This guy implies that he's always been a spork. Suspicious. Okay. You can feel spork monster winding up to a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you could just watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. <laughs> Whiskey A says, LOL, what did I just walk into? Oh man, you have no idea. This is the most ridiculous game ever, but I sound like we're getting close to the end. So, so I'm, I'm having my KFC, I'm having my popcorn chicken nuggies, and we are, we are, we're befriending spork monsters, apparently. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up, he draws a serious stare to Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Okay. Oh, well, well, the two choices are you summon extra power from deep down within yourself, or you give up and drop out of school. Oh, he said he turns up into spoon, food, not a spork. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Summon the extra powers from deep within yourself. Well, if, if anything gives me more extra powers, it's, it's beer. So well, let's take some more unicorn parts. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. I came here for beer. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Cliffy, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been prepared their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful. Because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. <gasps> Cliffy, get the shit together. Don't worry, dear Cliffy. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decide that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. I love his little freaking chicken chicken staff. That's pretty cool. Alright. Colonel, the Colonel came in to save the day. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Hell yeah. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tendies you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass the individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now pre prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems like we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hehe, <laughs> I'm flying. Sound like it's coming from the broom closet over there. 
Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? Most likely. That guy's an asshole. Oh, fucking. Every time he pops on the screen, I'm just like, this fucking asshole. Like, such a... I mean, looks good though, but damn. When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? You would. You would You would wedgie a small child, wouldn't you? Pick on someone half your size and age. The bubble bath bourbon says, This is especially hilarious considering that the real colonel would show up at random restaurants and yell at the employees for not following corporate standards. I know, this like this I idealization of Colonel Sanders seems very <laughs> inaccurate. Um, to Joseph, is this an actual game that needs playing, or is it a weird video? It's 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 a game. There's there's decisions that have to be made. I, I got game over like right before you popped in, so we went back a little bit. Um, not really the most choices. Most dating stuff like this, you have a lot of choices. This one's not. It it's a KFC game. KFC made this game again. So, it, it, for a freaking fast food restaurant game, I'm I'm impressed so far. I thought a wedgie was a salad. Looks like Pop is eliminated from the competition, seeing how he didn't cook anything. But that's not fair, he was in the fucked up in the broom closet. I can't feel my legs, may I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say. It's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not necessarily yearbook material. So yeah, yeah, Whiskey Mountains. She said, didn't Miriam have a choice between the young boy or the oven? That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. It got a little weird. I was like, what? I mean, both of them are weird choices, but like, this, this guy's a kid. I mean, that would have been, you know what? If I played this again, I'm going to choose that because I want to see what happens. I want to see, does he take her skydiving too? It's the final fantasy of dating sims. <laughs> is it me or is KFC super gay? I mean... You could be a girl playing this, so. You wait to hear a signature were beep or other onomatopoeia. I know that word, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, <laughs> three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come. For me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Oh, look at his little paws. Oh, I wish I had a professor that was that adorable. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. <laughs> what? This is KFC, bitch. Like, what the fuck is that? All right. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny neuro... Tamaki? Neuro Tamaki? I spy a float in this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. <laughs> and then Joseph says, Isn't me or is KFC make me want to be gay? I know, man, that, that, that kernel is irresistible. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much poured love poured into it as yours. Oh, she's my friend, but I'm a little jealous. I want to win. I want to win. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Cliffy, for helping me to believe in myself. Yeah, whatever. As long as I get to be the Colonel's business partner, I'm happy. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made. Uni over egg, over smooth egg custard in an axe hewn hewn urchin's shell topped with caviar. What on earth? What are these dishes? I thought we were making fried chicken. Come on, guys. You're making me sweat here. I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> did, you, did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles lean in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his close, nose close enough because of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. 
Woof, woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Oh no! I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Hmm. You know what? One of my favorite subreddits that I follow is called Who Needs Plates? Or like, I think something like that. It's literally restaurants that serve that serve like food like on freaking rocks or like slabs of wood. Like such like inefficient methods of eating things. So I, I, I agree with that. Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle to the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles generously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, is time to step up. Oh god, what is this bitch made? I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That's damn, that's adorable. Ashley, that's the best thing you've done so far. <laughs> Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Bitch, disqualified. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Cliffy? I told you. It's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job of cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot help keep her two-faced routine up. I should have left that bitch a chicken. <laughs> you wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. What is this? Is this mac and cheese with chicken in it? Is this something that KFC serves? And why didn't I order it tonight? Because I would have totally ordered that. That looks delicious. Although, <laughs> I will say, um, once popcorn chicken gets a little cold, it's not the most enjoyable. Sauce is still good though. Uh oh. A literal drug roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in the kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 years of dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass. You all get a pass. Does that include, does that include Ashley? Because I feel like that bitch is still disqualified. KFC does have that bowl. Well, Adriana, I need to get that next time. Everyone partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another de destined, whatever. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declare that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better after this one? Now that the school year is almost complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been redecorated in order to serve the site as a school's graduation dance. <gasps> Do I get to dance with the colonel? I hope I get to dance with the colonel. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house. Oh, oh, oh! That was, uh, okay. That was not, the demonstrator did it better than me. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? 
Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Ah, I love that. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they're committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. What is he wearing? Oh my god, Van Van. I mean, she's also like, I like her little cute little heart cut out, but like, damn Van Van. I like that. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. What the fuck? What? I need beer for this. <sighs> Neon rainbow all the way. <laughs> oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the spork monster. He totally melted, mellowed down. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by a new name. Party monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to spork. No, party monster. Dejected, student walks off. By the way, we never learn student's name. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically. I skipped that accidentally. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? I think, I think I know. We never found out his name, Lil. <laughs> it's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I knew you weren't able to compete in the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was at least we could do for the, for the school's dean. Ah, now I get it. And we get a new wing of the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of such, such and which, such and such. Uh, so he he kind of got that because his, his dad's the dean of the school. I get it. The music at the end of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. Oh no. It's the freaking pressure cooker. Clark. Clank. Who has arrived late to the dance. Oh, look at him in his spiffy little suit. That's so cute. Jason just says this all makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Oh my god, are you also a friggin' dog? Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clink, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I, I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clink. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clink disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. The weird ending of every teen drama, absolutely. Oh my god, look at that man not in his signature suit. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough just to give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end, question mark? I think I, 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 I wanted to get with the colonel and I wanted to go back to his room and, and eat, eat, his, eat his chicken cock, but apparently I'm just eating his chicken. Um, oh, okay, wait, no, it's not the end. Okay. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Cliffy, what are you doing sitting here all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask you to dance. Oh shit, here we go. I wonder, might you might you tell me, what are the quali qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, uh, I don't know. Spicy musk, tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I'd love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. I'd be so glad to spend it together with you, Cliffy. 
How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Mm-hmm. Play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is your best path forward? Well, damn, okay. Could it be? You found a new love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I, I suppose I can enroll in pastry school. Oh, my dear Cliffy, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. Well, you know what? You keep making your chicken, I'll keep drinking whiskey and reviewing whiskey. That, that sounds like a perfect pair to perfect pair to to have the best life ever with. The end. That, I think that's really really the end. Oh my gosh. Okay, we get the little intro song again. Final time. You guys are gonna hear this and see this. Let's 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 play it out. Let's let's enjoy our time with, with the colonel. Absolutely would have been better with some LSD. <laughs> That's not the friend zone. I think we're still we're totally still dating. We're just not working together. Uh, Colonel, you'll always have my heart. Thank you for sharing this amazing game with us. Thank you guys for watching this game. This has been a journey, if I've ever seen one. This, this uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it, that ending. I, I was about to be really upset with the ending, but then it got a little better by by us dancing. That was nice. Um, but yeah, that was I Love You, Colonel Sanders. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know we ran a little late. We're heading over on Discord to our monthly hangout for Patreon. Everyone, every, every, everyone, everyone, everyone. Everyone $5 and up on Patreon gets access to that. Um, if you happen to join tonight, let me know, and I will upgrade you on Patre on Discord to get the tier to join our hangout. But until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Colonel Sanders dating game twist. <laughs> Cheers. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys next Thursday for another whiskey review stream. Cheers. And I got to go meet the colonel back, you know, in the back room. We're going back to his place because I wanted that to happen so bad. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Cheers, guys. Bye.